Welcome back to the last part of our Powering Up the Stage series. By this stage, we hope that you are full of the Christmas spirit and enjoying Christmas week. So for the finale of the Powering Up the Stage, we're going to focus on musical theatre this week. And I am beyond delighted to welcome two leading Irish lights of the West End stage. First of all, we have a lady who played Grisabella here on the Borgosh Energy stage, as well as playing the lead of Elle in Legally Blonde and Sandy in Greece on the West End stage. Our second guest played the lead of part of Deco in the West End production of The Commitments and also here on the Borgosh Energy stage. Before the pandemic hit, he was on tour in the brilliant The Lion King. Please welcome Susan McFadden and Brian Gilligan. You're very welcome. Usually there'd be a big round of applause, but we're not yeah. getting that today. <laughs> How does it feel to be back on the board gosh energy stage? Oh, it's nice, isn't Amazing. it? Amazing. Yeah. yeah, just even walking in the door at the back, just something mm. about a st any, th any stage on any theatre, there's just this atmosphere, isn't there, when you step yeah. onto into a theatre, onto the stage. And I felt it today when I walked on here. I was like, oh, it just feels magical. Yeah. Even with, you know, everything going on. Because it's been eight years since you've been... No, actually, you were in The Snowman last yes, year. Yes, it's been nearly 12 months. <laughs> nearly 12 months, but then you Getting did, there, you yeah. did like, Grisabella so yeah. memorably. Yeah, that was 2013. And we may hear a little bit of that uh, during the week, so I'd be tuning in every day. And Brian, uh, Deco and the Commitments. Yeah, it's been four and a half years since I was... Oh, well, yeah, yeah, four and a half, I think, years since I was here last uh, for that glorious three and a half week stint the the, the 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 kind of the press the press night was here the the audiences were electric and it was so good bringing that show back to home soil wow i just i, I still remember it and i also remember the uh the, the matinee performance where there was there was a power outage and we and we still kept going oh. on the audience one of the <laughs> best moments you kept yeah. going i remember yeah, yeah. it so well Pro probably it was the fantastic. most memorable moment of the whole tour like we had some moments but that was definitely probably the top it was just fantastic and still st still get emotional every single time i walk in here and think of how much crack we had it was brilliant because really it was at the beginning of the tour too so it was all just fresh and new and yeah. fantastic yeah. so how susan did you get involved in musical theater how did it start well i was sent to billy barry when i was like five uh, my mum sent me like the day i started primary school she sent me to to billy barry as sort of a hobby and the rest is history really yeah and brian uh, I, I I was kind of uh, similar to uh, Susan. I, I actually started in Billy Barry for about six months, and then <laughs> my mom decided ah, I'm going to do the same thing and open up my 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 own kind of separate stage school. And I went there for a few years, and uh, yeah, I I kind of just wanted to stay in music and you know uh, be on stage. I didn't think I was ever going to become a career really, and now you know. Seven, seven years out of here we are. And when did that moment come that you were like, okay, I'm going to make a go of this as a career? Uh, it was, <laughs> I, I think properly in full time, it, it, it happened around 2012 where I just said, right, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to finish up in uni. And I, I actually trained originally to be an opera singer uh, at the Royal Irish Academy of Music just down the road. Uh, but I've always had such a massive passion for musical theatre and I, I wanted so much to just give it a shot, at least to tell myself that I'd done it or that I tried and it turned out like I never would have dreamed. I, I still can't believe that I'm going home and telling my mates I'm in The Lion King. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> really? They, they, I, I, think they're, they, I think they still think I'm lying to them. <laughs> <laughs> Lion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. um, and, and Susan, you ended up in London where yeah. you uh, you uh, were in the great ITV show, yeah. Search for Sandy. How did yeah. that happen? What was that like? Um, quite reluctantly it happened. So I was actually, when I first moved to London, I had been working in Ireland. I was doing actually a musical called, um, I was doing Singing in the Rain, with two guys who had been brought over from London. And one of the guys there was like, "Would you come over to London?" And I was like, oh, I'd, "I'd love to, but I don't know where to start." And you know, he was like, "Look, I'll um, I'll help you out. I'll, I've got a friend. She's an agent. Um, you know, so that's kind of how that happened. Went to London, signed up to this agent, and they were the ones who were like, "There's this ITV show coming up. I think it'd be perfect for it." And I was like, "No way! Oh my God, I would die!" You know, because I'm actually like, I would be quite shy, and that's like, I actually hate auditions. I'm not good at auditions, so to be on TV auditioning was just like. A nightmare to me so 
he was like, no, I really think you should do this. It's the perfect part for you and it'll be foot in the door. Because like it is, you do need to kind of get a foot in the door mm, over there. Mm. And, you know, I was coming from Ireland and no one knew who I was. So, so yeah, I was like, okay, I did it. And I didn't think I'd win. I was like, okay, you know, we just got onto the telly section. And a lot of people that get onto these shows, if you get onto the TV, that's your foot in the door. You've and done you, really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. You want to do something. I didn't think I was going to win it at all. Um, when so, you got yeah. to top three, were you starting to think, God, oh, I have a chance of this? I don't, you just don't allow yourself to ever imagine that because these things are so precarious. Like anything could happen from week to week. Um, so, yeah, so then that's what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> the and then you went on and played Sandy yeah, in the production. Yeah, it, it was great. It was actually, I'm, I'm so glad that I did it. Obviously, it completely opened up doors and, and led on to the rest of my time there in London going really well so yeah and Brian you know because you were in Britain's Got Talent so memorably was it two years ago 2018 it was it was a year ago a year and a bit uh, 2019 and you got to the semi-finals what was that like yeah that was that, that was a pretty great experience I like just the whole experience of being you know being uh, kind of brought over to London uh, twice or three times and obviously I'd lived there but I'd moved back to Dublin and kind of stayed resident here from 2018 but it was lovely because it was it was a nostalgia buzz and also the fact that it was going over for something pretty pretty cool um, but the, like it, it was just marvellous going into the um, to the Hammersmith Apollo and just just getting a feel for how the whole thing works and how how unbelievable the, the 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 show was as an experience because every everyone was just brilliant and the acts like like regardless of like you know opening rounds or semi finals it was just amazing to sit back and watch everyone from like circus performers to fire breathers stunt men comedians mm -hmm. you know um, uh, other singers and like the, the, that kind of brought like a real sense of wow. This is almost like just sitting back and appreciating how much the arts and entertainment industry is vital. Mm. And when you see the different strands and the different people that actually come together and make shows like that work, it was just awesome. It was, it was really, really good fun. An incredible experience for you both. Yeah, mm. yeah definitely. You get a tough skin, I think, doing something like that. It, it yeah. gears you up for going forward in your career, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And now, what other shared experiences have had? Because both of you have uh you know you were legally blonde and you played one of the supporting characters mm -hmm. and you were the same in the commitments in west end and then you both got the lead role yeah. so how did that happen what was that like we'll start with you season um well for me i actually came into the cast of legally blonde like um like the, it had already been cast and mm. then there was one role left um and when i auditioned for it it was it's funny it's um i don't know if you found this sometimes in I don't know if it's just London or but it, you know they can be quite um casting directors and people can be just like no the character has brown hair you have blonde hair so you don't really fit into yeah, that we don't know um, about wigs yeah. wigs don't exist and the whole show is wigged you know every show in London is wigged basically so um I they think they really wanted to fit I need me that. they wanted to fit me into the cast in some way so they were like they rang me back and they were like so, because the, the role of Elle had been already cast I think it was the very first role um, by Sheridan Smith by Sheridan Smith yeah, yeah. So, and that would, obviously would have been the kind of choice I think I would love to have gone for that part. Mm. So they rang me up and they said, can you come back in and we're going to put a wig on you and just see. And I was like, really? <laughs> so I went back in anyway, then I played the part and I actually loved, loved, loved playing that part because it was so different than, you know, say Sandy in Greece. And mm. I'd done Millie and Seven Brides for Seven Brothers before that. So it was completely different. She was quite, you know, she was sassy and a bit sexy <laughs> to push me boobs up and all these things that I would never do in real life so I really enjoyed it so then after a year um, I think Sheridan was sort of thinking about stepping back from the role so they asked me would I alternate um, would I consider kind of going up for the role and alternating so uh, yeah I went up for it and like again it was another audition process even though I was in the cast they had never seen me play it so um, I had to audition, but I, I did have that benefit of being so immersed in the yeah, show yeah. and, you know, obviously learning from Sheridan, who played it originally yeah. and um, being inspired by her, I guess. So I did. I felt very lucky that I had that advantage going into the audition process. Um, so, yeah, so I alternated then for about six months and then I took over for another year. So I was brilliant. Yeah, it was great fun. Such a wonderful yeah, part. Very, it's an amazing part. Very high pressure, though, because you're on stage the whole show. It's a big thing. So. 
Um, I didn't have much of a life off stage, no, but yeah. it made up for it being on. It was incredible. I loved that part. And for you, you were Billy in the commitments. Yeah. And then you graduated to deck one again, folks. Uh, please keep tuned during the week because there may be another special performance. I'm not saying anything more. But what was that like for you? It was great. It was great. Like, I, I, um, in in the first year of the commitments, there was obviously the buzz around that opening in London, and so many Irish people were cast in, in you know, a, a, a Roddy Doyle story, and it was it was a big deal. There was so much hype around it, and playing Billy Mooney was was interesting for me because I I I played drums uh, when I was younger and when I was a teenager, but when I came into the to, to the commitments cast, I was staring at all of these other actor actor musos around me and. The guy playing Mikael Wallace, uh, uh, Joe, who I've remained really, really close friends with, I'm go going to his wedding next year, hopefully, fingers crossed, with COVID-19, <laughs> but he was on Blue Man Group, and um, he he was so wonderful, and like, so much like so much knowledge he shared, and he used to give me like technical drills that I'd be practicing backstage, and I was like, oh my god, I've never done this kind of thing before. Um, and, and insofar as the actual, the, the way the show worked, there, there were five drum kits, uh, in different parts of the stage, one came from the ceiling on a hydraulic lift. One came from one came from one wing. Uh, another came as part of the garage that that, that was wheeled downstage. I, I don't know if like if if, if if anyone remembers it, but um, essentially just being the drummer and getting into the groove of that was fantastic because I I was actually able to appreciate how hard it is playing an instrument and 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 acting a role and having to think in two two strands coming together and it it was one of those things where in the rehearsal process because of the fact that it was so technical you had to concentrate the whole yeah. time if you dropped the ball it would have been like oh no if it was a case of anything being slightly off then you know it, it's one of those things that you're kind of slapping yourself in the wrists over but when it did all come together which it did it was just brilliant being being a part of the show and then um Towards the end of the first year, I was um, I, I was kind of singing backstage to myself, and uh, the resident director was right around the corner, and she just nipped in and she was like, "Oh hi, how's things?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, grand." I was just I was kind of belting away to myself in the dressing room, not realizing that she was around the corner. And two weeks after, she said, um, "Would you consider covering Deco?" Um, and I said. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not okay. even a question. I was, yeah. I was all over it. So they rehearsed me in and uh, got to cover Killian Donnelly. And he, he was just amazing with the amount of time that he gave wow. um, and brought me through the through the track and said, let's meet up for, for a pint or for a coffee and we can go through the whole thing. And it was lovely to have that, like, the, to, to have a, a West End leading man who was so generous and so good with his time and who was, was really... Uh, you know, um, really kind of uh, collected about it and relaxed. And it wasn't like, you know, you have to be, mm. you know, it was just, it was something fun and something really exciting. And then um, after a series of rehearsals and getting on for a couple of deco shows and me just being over the moon that I was even able to sing on the Palace Theatre in London, like, you know, never mind anything else. Like, um, they, uh, they, 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 they rang my agent and, uh, they said we'd like to offer Brian Deco and I was walking down Tottenham Court Road just getting a coffee one day and I was literally like shaking yeah. I, I couldn't I genuinely couldn't believe it so it, from then it just it, like like sim similar to UNL it was just a process of changing my lifestyle changing yeah. going out yeah. changing my diet it sings, going to the gym, it sings a week yeah. it, it shows a week yeah. and a lead is yeah, hard yeah. work but I yeah. just as you were telling that story, I was remembering actually when the commitments was auditioning in London, the amount of phone calls I got from people going, um, English, like, you know, UK people going, um, would you just uh, record this? If I send you the script, would you just record it on your <laughs> phone, in your accent? And I was like, no, these need to be, pro these need to be Irish Dublin people yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. Roddy Doyle and it's the commitments and it's so, to us, like, it's so iconic. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, mm, okay. Oh God, no, no, no! This needs to be pro, and I was so glad <laughs> when I saw the cast. I was like, yes, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it did need to be like authentic. So, final question: What words of advice? I'm sure there's a lot of people who are watching this today who want to be on the West End, who want to go to London and become an actor. What advice would you give them? I think, I think, sorry, one of my, the lessons I learned um, was to to definitely have confidence 
It's something I think that I lacked when I first went over and someone said to me before, act as if, like just act as if you are, you are the person that's, you know, going to own this stage. Yeah, yeah. So walk into it. Now I'm not great at taking my own advice, <laughs> but walk into it. Cause you meet so, I, you meet so many people and you're like, God, they must be so talented because they're so confident. And, <laughs> and then sometimes you might see them on stage and you go, they're okay. <laughs> like, so there's definitely an element that's a, big part to play when you're going over to London and auditioning and I think another thing as well is to have as many strings to your bow as possible mm -hmm. um, like the drumming you know, yes exactly <laughs> always keep you. training always keep learning and teaching yourself yeah. um, something because Brilliant. you're so much more valuable to a director or a producer yeah. the more you can do Brian yeah just just exactly what Susan said like you know it, it, the, the, there is a there is a certain sense of internal confidence that you've got to have because it's what gets you to you know and not to be too kind of believe and achieve because like not to sound cheesy but there is there is a massive amount to truth to that statement because i think if you if, if you don't have that genuine feeling in in your gut that you know that you can go and do these things then it's only going to stop you you know you're never actually going to get on the plane and go over to london and try um, so yeah, have the confidence. Work hard, you know. Um, do do, do g kind of gather all your skills and your abilities because that could be the difference between you getting your dream job and never getting in the door. Don't be afraid to you know to, to network and you know to, g try and try and get yourself into these situations as much as possible where you're auditioning and where where you're trying to keep a frequent and be be good to yourself and and as well one thing that I've definitely learned because seven years ago I came over to London bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and I was like holy crap this is amazing <laughs> um, but I always remember how kind people were and how um how just you know how uh, it's it's almost like the the arts industry is it, it's like a community of people and they they look out for you and uh, I, I I've had so much kindness and generosity shown to me that I always make it a per, like a, a genuine objective of mine to try and be kind to up and coming young, Pass you know, young on. actors and singers and rising stars. And you know, when you get to go and watch these people, and you're like, wow, this the, this person has something special. You just want to be able to do something for them, mm. regardless of what it is, mm. even if it's just to you know, take them. <laughs> take take them for a few beers. And like, you're deadly. It doesn't matter. Any anything just to be generous and just to be yeah. nice. It's it it's it's something that you know um, that you have to show. Yeah. Brian and Susan, you are complete inspirations, and thank you so much for coming here today. Give us a little bit of your wisdom. Uh, I think you will inspire the next generation and. Indeed, I can't wait to see you back here on this stage again because this is where you belong. Thank you so Thank much you. today. And tune in uh, for the rest of the week because there's going to be some very special performances. Thank you. Thanks a million.